the deck. I used CD for the past four years. Um, I'm from France, from Paris. And my talk today is my attempt to build the universal template as a starting point for every project I, I work on. So as some of you may already know, I choose to build my entire talk inside the TV network. And I just <laughs> need to inflate the logo a little bit around here because I need some space, but uh, it was fun to make. Um, my chapters are for my talk has four chapters. So I just would like, before diving into the main subject, just present myself uh, before TD and with TD. At this moment, we will dive into the main subject of my talk. This is the, the, the creation of my template before concluding. So, before TD, I have to make just a few words about my education and my experience. Uh, in a big uh, 3D studios in Paris, and uh, the work I, I, I work on my spare time and my experience as a teacher. So let's start with my education. Uh, sorry, my education. Uh, <laughs> so I make scientific studies. Uh, I think it's the because and the why I love uh, science and math. And I make some artistic and technical studies uh, in the uh, University Institute of Technology in France, more about audiovisual and web content. And after that, I make a school uh, near Paris called the EEASA. It was the animation school. And uh, fun fact, it was uh, one of the last house of the, gra of the graphic magician uh, Georges Méliès. This is a a pretty, uh, a pretty uh, castle near Paris. And after that, let's talk about my experience in big 3D studios. I work a lot for Illumination My Life in Paris, so on um, some of the feature films you can see in the slideshow. And I work for the Supermans, a nice studio and I made um, some steps in the video game industry, so I work on the last uh, concept game, uh, game called Detroit, uh, two years uh, from now. Um, on my spare time, I make a lot of, I was fascinated by the, the graphic possibility of mad art, so I make a lot of pictures, so hyperbolic tilings, I make a lot of stuff about uh, fractals and stuff, and I just love the geometry of things. Um, I was fascinated also by the optical illusions. So at this time, my tools were zoetrops, were um, 3D glasses, praxinoscopes, and all the stuff from the pre-cinema. So I really, really fascinated by the way we perceive things and the possibility of playing with the perception, the visual perception. I made some stuff about some shadow art. I tried to 3D print this piece. It's impossible because uh, there is a lot of different pieces. But you can see my logo in uh, all the different uh, directions. I was... Um, I made a lot of calligraphic works also. And uh, try some 3D calligraphy you can see uh, with uh, 3D glasses and stuff. I made a lot of uh, calligraphy works. But this is before um, my school. So I made see, uh, also a few prints. So I have a small online shop. And as a teacher, my school became bigger. This is now called the George Lucas Institute. And I was a teacher for 10 years about software like Nuke, Photoshop, After Effects, Maya, ZBrush. And right now, I give some touch designer uh, workshops also. And up this way, at this moment, 
Um, I have a question here, maybe I'll click it. Okay. <laughs> I've met the blue screen, guys. Uh, I saw dead end. My expectations were not uh, filled and checked because in the industry I dream to work on, um, I discovered that um, I am like a robot. I have to click everywhere on the same buttons and I became crazy. and. Uh, I need to change something on my everyday life and my everyday job because this is so repetitive. I have to think about uh, change, uh, change the, my way of working, and this is the perfect moment for discover uh, uh, TV. So I was uh, working on some optical illusions. So I made a lot of uh, zoetrope pictures t turning on my turntable, and 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 I I begin play with webcams. So this is some time machines uh, with touch, some time machine effect with the webcam. Um, so another time machine test, and uh, and at this moment I. I have the. I choose uh, to make uh, like a photo booth, or you can take this kind of picture in just one click. And I just made a little slider to control the speed of it, and you can see on my turntable when I print it. Okay, so this kind of picture is taken in one click. So I just automate. Uh, everything, I just uh, move my head uh, in front of my webcam, just one click, and I have the disk. I just have to print it and put it on my turntable, and, and, it, and it worked uh, every time. I use a lot the Kinect, so I made a lot of instancing uh, kind of things with my Kinect, so I work a lot uh, trying some stuff, so this is my profile picture you see, and um, kind of interactive and um, uh, point clouds. So I take a lot of pictures of me, of, of my friends uh, coming at home. I try to make some visual for the dome. So this is a fisheye, and I built uh, an, a way of, of uh, previs the image. Um, so I just put some seats and I used a lot the photogrammetry techniques. So this is my flat. Uh, all you see is uh, real time in TD. I just play with a uh, lot of ways of uh, seeing point clouds and stuff. So this is the, my uh, living room. Um, I tried a slime mode uh, talks I found on internet, so I make some picture about these great particle techniques, and I have some pretty nice pictures uh, coming uh, from it. I work with some noise, so I make these strange kind of images. I also work a lot with reaction diffusion, so I try some really natural and organic patterns. This is real time, but I just take some uh, screenshots. And I have a lot of nice uh, texture uh, coming from this system. You can also see, uh, in, I just uh, like paint uh, stuff based on reaction diffusion more abstract uh, way of uh, viewing. So this is instancing, but based on reaction diffusion patterns. I play a lot with the Vincent Ouzé flex shop. So I made some what I call abstract fluids. So this is uh, everything is built from the, the fluid simulation, but uh, I have more abstract ways of seeing it. Uh, so I play with my mouse. Uh, and I can just play with the adhesion as, and a uh, and lot of, uh, okay, and I made this, this series of pictures also just with um, abstract fluids. And I sometimes just display it with my VP. And I try to obtain some organic patterns and uh, more 
molecular things. I work uh, last year uh, to make a, a clock uh, displayed in a, in a mall. So you just have a clock, and with the Samsung tablet, you, you have some some sliders to to change the the quantity of connection and the the distance. You can choose to have some um, digital or this kind of clock. I work also uh, a lot with uh, Creative Collective in Paris. So we make a lot of uh, parties in techno clubs. So the most famous of, of these clubs in Paris was the Rex, the Bateau Phare. And we made some, I have a collective with some uh, DJs, musicians, uh, VJs. So we work with this collective called La Treve, with a famous museum in Paris, so the Musée de la Marine. We made some big projection, and I was in charge to make um, a screen, interactive screen, where people can just drive some fishes with the hand. You have a small Kinect at the bottom of it. Um, I made a lot of uh, collabs with musicians, so DJs, and I uh, work uh, also with my friend uh, in tour, friends, um, and we just try to um, make an interactive drum. So each time, sorry, each time he eats some pads, you can have uh, you have some some lights. Um, what is the fuck with my frame rate? Okay. Yeah, maybe. So I made uh, some VR experiments also with TD. So the most, uh, this is Fuse. I, uh, um, I, am, I have a dome version of it also. And this is the uh, four minute uh, VR experiment made uh, in touch. And this is a, a small teaser. I can show you. Or maybe I have some. So this is a equirectangular uh, render of, uh, of this VR experiment. Um, and for the commission works, I work with the Ganget. It's an outside bar in Tours. Um, and I made some projection for them, uh, a 20 meter long uh, projection uh, just uh, at the top of the bar. And I made also some, um, some visuals, live visuals of DJs. So I put my Kinect on the stage and I can just move it around with my Xbox uh, uh, controller. And you can see the DJs, and I have a second Kinect to the audience, so people can see their face in a big screen. And it was uh, quite fun. Um, I work also with the Museum of Fairground Arts in Paris. It's a really nice place in Paris, in the middle of Paris. So this is two uh, private streets. And this is a magical uh, place. You have a lot of stuff from past centuries. It's the biggest collection of fairground art pieces um, in the world, I think. And when I work in touch designer at this place, this is my desk. And I change my desk every day. But it's a really strange but beautiful condition to work. Um, and for them, I made a lot of projects. So I made also a photo booth. So this is kind of the, the old photo booth you can, um, you can find in the past centuries. So this is just one piece of food with, with a hole, and you just have to put your head inside. But we just build it with some more recent technologies. So I'm in front of my webcam. And in just one click, I can put my face, sorry, inside all picture. So you can see me in uh, different uh, aspects. 
And this is, we play a lot with it. We, uh, this is my, just my whip, but we play a lot with, uh, with my colleagues. And I use my knowledge in photogrammetry, and I also want to make some uh, mapping. Maybe, I ju sorry, I just have to, uh, what, 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 this, maybe, uh, this one. I want my frame rate back. I have put a lot of stuff in my, okay. So this is uh, video mapping based on photogrammetry, so all you see is light but I made um, a, a scan of this big rock and I just have a slider to choose the water level and uh, all, the, all, the, all the landscape is changing depending on, on, the, on the, eight, the, the water height. And uh, I put some little edge feedbacks to generate a kind of waves and This is a really, really nice place in Paris. And I work also with the super monks as, um, on a laser game. So I just take my uh, laser and I can eat some. This is a blob track tracking, so I put a webcam and every time the red laser hits the wall, uh, you can have uh, real-time impacts and you can shoot some 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 bottles and, and um, so we try to reinvent the laser game and you can shoot other players but also maybe things on the walls. Okay, and at this moment I really um, think it was time to build something because I don't want to rebuild everything at startup. I need some templates, uh, pre-made stuff. I really need to make some quick modification during my creation process. I find some solution uh, about the optimization. I want the full control with my MIDI controller and my stream deck. Um, I also need workies with small teams and we have to, uh, we, we really need to have some really logical and clear uh, networks. I need a friendly environment and uh, easy upgrades. So I made my universal template. Just a quick reminder, I'm an independent person I work on modest project size or modest size project maybe. Uh, you have to know I only learn TD with tutorials online, so my knowledge is maybe quite limited. And I, was, and I mostly work alone. I'm really often the only TD guy on, on the team. So this is the, this is the universal template, maybe is perfect for my way of using TD, maybe it not, not yours, but let's have a look. So today in my network, in my template, I have 19,000 nodes. The toe size is approximately one meg. The total size of my wall um, folders, I 100 uh, mega, just a little bit less. And I tested it in the last TD version. No, it's not the last, this is the build from last week. And when you have a look at my hard drive, I have these um, folders. So everything going out TD is uh, inside this one. So I can really easily make some uh, screenshots and, and make some movies. And every sources I need, the audio, the image, the, uh, the 3D models, and, and I, uh, inside the source folder. For the clarity and the lisibility of networks, I have two families of containers. You have the rectangular one. Um, I, I put a lot of icons on my, on my work. And the rectangular one are for the physical devices, things you can touch for real, and, uh, and, uh, and the square ones are more for some concepts, so the 3D scene, um, the, uh, the post-processes, effect, the light show, so the concepts are in a square shape. 
the organization of my network is this one. I have on the left on the left my input. So every devices uh, I can uh, we can uh, give me some data. I have a three D scene. This is the four containers when I where I build my show. So this is the light show. Everything's about DMX, light, wind, smoke, and stuff. I have the generation of my pixels. Uh, it's I have a lot to say about this one, and uh, the um, sounds and all electronic stuff. So motors, servo motors, Raspberry, and 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 things like that. And at the right, I have my outputs. So this is where the signals are going out my computer to the other devices. So I have to explain a little bit about my way of working. I have what I call two di uh, different perform modes. Uh, one uh, for my workspace and one for my show. I will explain this because this is me. This is not actually me, but I put a question mark. This is not a footage of me, but this is my computer. You, I kept the normal F1 uh, perform mode, uh, the TD normal perform mode, and I can switch on my main screen from the TD interface to uh, a user interface or my live visual. But before uh, performing a show, I want to previs, uh, have a previs of what my signals are actually are. So I can previs, sorry, I can previs what is my image, what are doing my, my smoke machine and my lights and what is my actual sound. And I click uh, uh, another custom perform mode. I can activate with my keyboard, with my controller, with my, with my stream deck and, and my interface also. And when I click this custom perform mode, the signals are transmitted to my devices. So this is what I call a custom perform mode. And what's nice, uh, when my client, when uh, I, I deliver some files to my client with the touch player, they don't have, of course, the TD interface, but they have your, their user interface on the main screen, and they, and they can choose uh, when they want to perform uh, the show. Okay. So let's dive into the main subject. So I just... Uh, put my webcam signals here. It's the way I will show you my controller. Just, okay, I have to press play. Up. No, no, it's okay. It's just, uh, yeah, yeah, it's just the other network is really heavy, but this one is, is okay. <laughs> um, so I can show you, I, I make every, uh, a lot of things with my MIDI controller. So this is my actual project. I just have to put the name at the top. Um, and I can choose a lot of post processes effects. So I can put with my controller some grain. I can choose the glow. I can put some vignettage or not. I can drive my camera in all directions and I can choose uh, if I want to colorize some stuff. And I just press one button if I need to take a picture of it. So this is one picture is, uh, is on my hard drive uh, right now. And let's go. So for my input, I work with a lot of devices, so I try uh, to not rebuild everything each time I, I begin something. So when I use, I don't know, my uh, controller, I can choose um, if I need some help to remember what uh, things are going on. Uh, if I work with webcams, I have some pre-made stuff. If I work uh, with two webcams, for my 
OSC, I can just change uh, the name of the channels and every output I own are here. So I have also a web uh, API to get some data from internet. I work with the eye tracking from Toby, Leap Motion and Raspberry and, and mics and stuff. So every device is, um, we catch, we, we, uh, which can send me some data. I have, sorry, I have my 3D scene. So my 3D scene is like a real uh, film shooting stage. So I have the backstage. So typically you can make everything you want here and it's, it will not affect the, the rest of the process. So this is what I call the backstage. And my main stage, you have some lights, some cameras, some geometries. Um, this is the sound, real-time sound. Every sound I, can, I cannot put in the soundtrack. Uh, and this is a, cost, a custom uh, timeline and event uh, stuff. So let's begin with the light. So in my light, I have um, a directional light, an ambient light, and an environment light. Uh, in my camera, I have a stereo rig, so I have two cameras at the same time and one for the dome. And I can drive it from, from my Xbox controller and from my, from my Novation uh, MIDI controller. And, and in my geometries, I have all these kind of geos. Uh, this is a kind of uh, classical geos but I have also a render pick, so if I need to uh, make some geometries pickable, um, I have a specific uh, container for the bullet and for the flow. And I can just maybe put my visual on a small window, okay. And I can drive my camera with my controller. It's really useful when I work on something and I want to see uh, another point of view. Um, and you see uh, with this render pick elements, I put two geometries inside so I can click this thing and move it stuff in my final render. And what's nice also, it's I made these things uh, bullet actors, so I can just press one button and I have some bullet uh, dynamic. And I can choose to play with my little services. Um, so every geometry I put in this container will be pickable. Every geometry I put in this container will be uh, bullet uh, dynamics and so on. The real-time sounds, I just made a replicator to have a sound each time a bullet a container hits uh, something. So you have to understand the real-time sounds, it's every sound I can't put in my soundtrack and it will finally be added to my soundtrack to have the final sounds, but this is the real-time sounds, like a mic on a, on a, on a real uh, shooting stage. And this timeline uh, component is a custom um, timeline and events, so this is a main timer, um, I can start and reset it, but this event template, it's a small uh, container I can put everywhere on my network and I can choose to have approximately like keyframes. I want an event four seconds big, uh, after the beginning of my timeline or I want a ramp between 18 and 22 seconds and this is ex exactly what I need uh, for VR, uh, for VR uh, project or, or things like that. So this is the 3D scene. Um, to uh, build my show, I need some pixels. So you just have a big switch here. 
if my sh uh, my image is some uh, screen or or projector so you have the, the image here you can choose to make uniquely some 2D content. So I just click 2D and I just have 2D content and here you can deal with webcams, GLSL, 2D, videos and stuff like that. And if you press 3D, the actual container will uh, render the, the 3D scene. And what's nice, in one click also, I can choose some stereoscopic. So I have now two cameras and I can just uh, play with the interocular and the convergence and I can choose what is my final uh, output um, uh, stereo output so if I can make uh, side by side images the top bottom if uh, you prefer I made some anaglyph and I made some uh, NVIDIA 3D vision and I can have my two raw signals Um, with my big switch, I can also choose. I am uh, building a Vive experiment. So, oops, sorry, I want to close this one. So, if you click Vive, you have now two pictures, and you just have to put the helmet on the head, and uh, you are inside your 3D scene. With one button, I can click Fisheye Dome. And, up. and I have a really nice fisheye with few options. I can make a um, dome, horizontal dome or vertical domes. And the last one is the equirectangular. So I can click this one. I have the 360 image. And thanks to David Brown, I just put a little, little planet shader. And you can see also this kind of pretty nice stuff with uh, little planets. So it's really easy to set up an experiment with this kind of system. Um, I have to talk two minutes about my post processes effects so maybe if you want to see it I will put a switch so this is the render uh, from the, the render top but I have here some a lot of post processes effects so you can find some vignettage, bloom, some glow, sharpen, some shine um, some grain and if you want to compare I can maybe show you this way this is uh, without my post processes. So this is the actual image render by the render top. But if I press, OK, so this is without and with my post processes. So you see you have a really nice control of the final image you, will, you need to do. So this is for the pixels. I have also for my show the possibility of a light show. So every device is working with DMX standard are here. You have some spotlights, some stroboscopes, some dimmer, some DMX dimmers, some smoke machine, the wind machine, uh, LEDs, LEDs bar, etc. And you just have to activate someone. Some, so if you just need spot stroboscope and dimmer, you can deactivate. So the little previs is turning black and I have the, just the channels I need. So it's really useful to just click and you finally have just the signals you need. For the light show, I also work with ArtNet, some addressable LED strips, so you can activate it or not. I work with some lasers, so I buy a lasers one month ago and I try to, uh, with the new laser chop, it's really nice. I uh, made some, some tests, it was great, I have my eyes wa was bleeding for the next two days, but it was okay. And um, thanks to Matthew and Zoe, I have also the Philips Hue control, so that's nice, I can choose 
the um, lighting of my living room just with the, the Philips Hue um, uh, container. So I can change the color of my living room depending on what project I'm working on and this is a pretty nice stuff. So this is for the light show, pixels, the sound. So I have um, a container for my um, soundtrack. So I can choose if I need a playlist, so MP3 for my hard drive, if I need the TD sample, or if I need MIDI files, and I have just some effects. I want to always normalize my signal, so I want a trail, and I'm, I'm deciding I want um, signals between zero and one, so I just have the sensibility of, of the, of the, of the sound, and i if I uh, signals over one, uh, it's not so good, so I just few sliders. And my final audio, like I said earlier, is my soundtrack plus the real-time sound I, uh, I, um, I build on my 3D scene. And this is a container for the electronics. So if I need to drive some motors or servo motors, and, and I just have the kind of uh, previs. Okay, and this is uh, the last container, the real outputs. This is where the, we created here in the four containers the final signals. And at this, in this container, these signals are actually um, transmitted to the devices. So I have a really nice way of um, previs uh, what I am actually made with TD. And all the devices um, for the output, so if the network out, the Etherdream for the lasers, the DMX um, interface, I have a small container for my printer, so if I take a picture and, and click print, I have automatically my picture coming out uh, my printer, this is nice. This is the display, this is where actually are my windows, um, final windows. Um, the hard drive out, if I want to make a screenshot or a movie file out, this is my hard drive out. The sound, the raspberry and the TD out, if I want to send something to another uh, computer. And in my display, so you have one or two uh, signals if you are in stereoscopic work uh, coming here. I uh, build a kind of dispatcher so the dispatcher is nice. I have one picture, but I want it on three projectors, so I have uh, only um, what I need on each one. Uh, this is uh, I w what I call a dispatcher. And I have um, the keystoning and deform uh, container, and I have e here a little modified uh, uh, cation mapper and a little bit modify also a stoner. So, and this is uh, the key stoning or warping. If I need, I can some, put some edge blending and uh, I output my four final uh, s pixel signals. Um, and I'll show you just something. If, if I press F1, on this container, I can choose to have my real-time visual, but I can also choose to have a user interface. So for some clients, it's really nice to have just a little bit, uh, just a really simple user interface. You can previs or not uh, what's going on. Uh, uh, you have maybe some, some options. Uh, and this is the way we launch the show. So my clients uh, doesn't want the show starting automatically with the with the computer. So I just build this button, and is the, the the my custom perform mode I was talking about. So my client just have to hit perform, and and uh, if I had a second screen, my my pixel were transmitted to it. 
and this interface is fully customizable, really simple way, so I just try to make things simpler. I can ch choose really rapidly what is the background, I can choose a color of it, and if I need uh, every option for, for, uh, for um, excuse me, I don't have the word. So, I have to show you a last thing I bought a few weeks ago. This is a really nice piece of device called the Stream Deck. Um, oh sorry, I need my webcam signals. Up. Nope. Ah. So this is a Stream Deck. It's a really nice uh, piece of, of, of device. And, okay, sorry. Okay, so with my Stream Deck, I have some general um, options. So if in my outputs, and I can uh, press the custom perform mode here. But if I don't want my image, I can just press this button and the image disappear. If I don't need the sound, I just can press this one and the sound is off. And uh, is, this is a fully customizable uh, LED screen, so you can put icons on it. And what's really nice, I can navigate my network with these small icons. So if, you, if I want to go to my inputs, just press this one and I'm in my input. If I want to be in my 3D scene, just have to press this one. And it's a really, really nice way uh, of uh, navigating inside the network. It's a bookmark navigation. So I just hit my, my bookmarks here. But with this, with, with this kind of, of stuff, it's uh, really, really easy to navigate. So this is my template. Uh, just go back in this one, and I want to conclude. Um, OK, I just want to say, for me, TD is just more than just a software. It permits me a kind of professional reconversion. I gain some independency and freedom working on this software. I found really nice ways of uh, new ways of creation. I work on really nice projects and it permits me to meet great people. So I would like to thank, of course, the world community. The Facebook group is awesome. Thank you, the, the derivative team and my contact, Isabelle Rousset. Thank you, Mathieu Ragan, for your great tutorials. And I would like to thank you uh, to thank uh, these uh, people, um, so Vincent for his, his distance threshold and flex shop, David Brown for the Dove and the Little Planet Shader, Snowed for the Catan Mapper, Mathieu Ragan and Zoe Sandoval for the Philippe Sioux Control, Jean-François Renault for the Bookmark Navigation, and Elbers for the Render Peak Technique and uh, uh, the COM, uh, the RS232 uh, Communication. If you want to keep in touch, um, you have my contact. Um, after the talk, don't hesitate to come to me if you want to see some 3D picture on my tablet, because I have a lot of ways of seeing um, this kind of uh, 3D images. So just don't hesitate to come to me if you want to see this in 3D, OK? Thank you for having me here today. Uh, thanks, derivative team, and uh, good uh, summit to everyone. Thank you. Really awesome. Um, cool. So I think we have time for <laughs> one question. Who's the first to raise their hand? Anyone? Excuse me, my talk was a little bit longer. Than no, no, it's okay. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's better that, that the, all the info gets out. Question? Two questions. Oh, here. Okay, cool. Rob, I'll come over. Yeah, yeah, of course. Thank you. 
Uh, first, that was awesome. Thank you. And uh, secondly, do you see any performance issues with having that much in all in one environment? Any performance issues? Yeah, there's a lot of things going on there. Uh, most of the time, I have a template, and I have to admit, I have put uh, maybe a little too much things, but I think it's faster to delete stuff than creating some. So when I start a project, and I have to choose what I need, and, and it's really easy to delete some things, and I don't see any performance issues. I work on pretty great computers. My laptop is quite powerful, so no, my environment is not, is, is, is not so much cost for the computer. Cool, okay, thank you. Um, thanks, Bertrand. Okay, thank you. <clears throat>